In this video we're going to explore the confidence intervals for the mean of small samples. To do this we have to include the t-distribution. Now the t-distribution we assume that our random variable is approximately normal. We do not know the underlying population standard deviation and our sample size is less than 30. If that's the case we could use this to find our t-distribution but we'll also be using Excel to help us with this. Since it is approximately normal, we will still have the bell curve, and the area under that curve will be 1, and our mean median mode will all be 0. Now instead of z-scores, we're going to be looking at t-scores for our critical values, and we now have to deal with what's called the degrees of freedom. And these are the number of free choices that we have left after a sample statistic is calculated. For the t-distribution, the degrees of freedom is the sample size minus 1. Now the reason we care about this is that as our degrees of freedom increase and our sample size increases, once we get to about 30, our t distribution pretty much becomes the standard normal distribution and at that point we can go back to z-scores which are easier to calculate. So say we need to find a t-score, we need to know our confidence level and our sample size. First thing we do is we find the complement to our confidence level, the 1 minus c and then we're going to plug all of our information into Excel in this t.inv.2t and it's 2t for two tails so that we don't have to actually calculate one tail and then figure out the other and it uses the complement of the confidence interval and the degrees of freedom sample size minus one and this gives us the positive critical value so say I'm looking at a 95% confidence of the t distribution when sample size is 21. So c value is 9.95, n is 21. I need my complement, which is 0.05, and I know my degrees of freedom would be 20. So I plug it into the Excel formula, and that tells me my positive t critical value is 2.086, and the negative would just be the negative version. So what I know is 95% of the area under the t-distribution with 20 degrees of freedom is between positive and negative 2.086. Now if I need to calculate confidence intervals, I do it the same way I did it when I was doing large samples. The difference is my margin of error formula is slightly changed. Instead of using the z-critical value, I now use the t-critical value. And since I don't know my population standard deviation, I have to use a sample standard deviation. So let's look at an example. Coke wants to estimate the mean number of cans it's producing. It does a sample of 17 days and finds the average is about 3,240. They know that it's an approximately normal production and they only have the sample standard deviation which is 148 and they want the 99% confidence interval for the mean number of cans being produced. So I know my sample mean and because I only have the sample standard deviation and my sample size is 17, I have to use the t distribution. So I use that t.inv.2t 99% the complement would be 1% n-1 is 16 and that tells me my t-critical value is about 2.92. When I plug that in for my margin of error, I do my t-critical value, my sample standard deviation, and my sample size. And that comes out to about 104 and 84 hundredths. Now I can calculate my confidence interval. I'm going to take my mean and I'm going to add and subtract my margin of error. And that'll give me about 3,135 and 16 hundredths, 3,344 and 84 hundredths. So when I'm talking about cans, which are discrete items, I need to make sure I'm inside those values. So I would say that we are 99% confident that the mean number of cans produced in the plant is between 3,136 and 3,344 cans. Now here's a chart to help you think about when do I use the Z distribution and when do I use the T distribution. First thing, we are dealing with normal distributions, so we want to ask ourselves first, is the standard deviation known? If so, we can say 
that we can use the z-distribution with that standard deviation. If it's not known, we want to ask ourselves, okay, do we know that the population is normal or approximately normal? If we don't know that, we can't do anything. We just have to stop. If we do know that that's been stated somewhere in our problems, we want to look at the problem and say, what's our sample size? Is it at least 30? If it's at least 30, I'm going to use the z distribution, I'm going to use the z-score and use the sample standard deviation. But if it's less than 30, I have to use the t-score and the sample standard deviation.